Welcome back to our course on how to research. In this lesson, we'll go over the second half of how to research a new topic. So at this point, we've learned that the first step in starting to research a new topic is to define the most important words in the resolution. The second step is to do some background reading. The goal of background reading is to learn basic information about the resolution. You can think of this step as looking, flying up in an airplane and then looking down at the resolution from 30,000 feet in the sky. You don't want to focus on really specific arguments or ideas, but instead you want to see the overall big picture. You want a general map of what the resolution covers, what types of general arguments people are going to make, um, important historical events that you need to know in order to understand the topic, or more like recent news or recent events that define what the topic is about. There is no set formula for how you should start doing your background reading, but one safe bet is to start by looking at Wikipedia articles about the topic or recent news articles that talk about something related to the resolution or talk about current events related to the resolution. So let's look at an example. We'll keep using the resolution, the United States federal government should substantially reduce its restrictions on legal immigration to the United States. Pause the video for five minutes and try doing some background reading on this topic. Quickly jot down in any sort of format that works for you any important ideas, arguments, or events that you find. So here you can see is a list of potential background topics we think should have made your list. You may have seen, for example, a lot of articles or ideas about the political impact of changing immigration restrictions. For example, you might have seen articles about how people in Congress often debate over whether or not we should reduce immigration restrictions. You may have seen ideas about how voters have different opinions on whether we should change immigration restrictions. And understanding the political impact of reducing restrictions is going to be a huge part of understanding the immigration topic as a whole. Second, you may have seen a lot of ideas about the economic impact of changing immigration restrictions. There are some people who say that increased immigration will hurt the economy and other people say that increased immigration will help the economy. And so this is going to be a major part of the immigration topic and something that you want to have included in your list of potential background topics. Third, you probably looked at some recent events or events in recent history that were related to the topic. So you probably came upon articles about Trump's immigration policy. That could include things like the travel ban or immigration detention centers. And that recent history, understanding where we are now in terms of immigration policy is going to be very important for this topic. Fourth, you probably saw arguments about how certain immigration restrictions are unethical and how we should remove them. And that's an important debate that we need to make sure that we address that lots of authors talk about and should be something that you found in your background reading. Keep in mind, this isn't like a complete list of background topics and it's definitely not a final answer key, but instead this should be sort of a guide to show you how we approach research. You probably found lots of other background topics when you did your background research, and that's great. And so the general idea here is that you should have a wide map of what's included in the immigration topic that will then help guide you as you move on to the next step of your research. So the next step in researching a new topic is to create a pro-con list. A pro-con list is a list of arguments that the affirmative or negative could make about the topic. In other words, we're trying to answer sort of two main questions. Why are people in favor of the resolution and why are people against it? There are lots of different approaches to making a pro-con list in terms of like places that you can look to find different arguments. But one place that you might want to start is procon.org. This website basically has a bunch of different topics, for example, immigration or criminal justice reform that you can look at um, that defines sort of the pros and cons for a particular idea or a particular policy. And those can be a great sort of first outline of different arguments for and against a resolution. You can also reference anything that you found throughout your background reading or anything that you come upon um, as you continue to do Google searches. So 
let's try and do this ourselves. Pause the video and spend five minutes making a pro con list for the immigration topic. So hint, make a table. One side of this table, the pro side, should be a list of reasons why the US should reduce immigration restrictions. The other side should be the negatives responses, or the con side, which is a list of reasons why the US should not reduce immigration restrictions. So let's return to the immigration topic and look at a specific example of writing different arguments. So one pro argument that we might want to write is the argument that reducing restrictions on immigration to the United States is morally good. A con argument is the argument that politicians will fight over reducing restrictions because they are so busy fighting, they can't pass other important laws. So for each argument, we'd want to find pieces of evidence that support that argument. So for example, we might find a bunch of different articles and pieces of evidence to support the argument that reducing restrictions is morally good. We take all that evidence that we find, all those cards that we cut, and put them into one document. Um, perhaps we title that document something about, how, something about ethics and immigration. And then separately for this con argument, we'd find a bunch of articles for why politicians will fight over reducing restrictions. We'd find articles about why they can't pass important laws when they're fighting. And then we'd put all those cards into a separate document, um, which has a separate title on our computer. And so at the end of this, for each argument on your pro and con list, you should have some sort of doc Word document that contains evidence to support that argument. And then when you're in a debate round, you can look in these different documents on your computer and read those arguments and read those pieces of evidence in order to answer whatever your opponent is saying. So let's go over a key tip for writing arguments that you should think about going forward. You should make sure to start broad and write arguments that can answer as many of your opponent's arguments as possible. So for example, you wouldn't want to write a super specific argument about the negative effects of reducing immigration restrictions on Poland. Why? Because it's unlikely that a lot of teams will make arguments about Polish immigration. Teams are going to make arguments about immigration from a ton of different countries. And so you don't want to waste your time looking at any specific country because you want to try and make the best use of your time and instead find arguments about immigration from any country. So for example, if you're finding an argument about how reducing immigration restrictions will cause politicians in Congress to fight, you should find arguments about restrictions from lots of different countries or immigration in general rather than just focusing on, for example, Poland. There are two other key ideas that you should think about with research. First, make sure to keep an open mind when you first start researching a topic. Whenever you first see a topic, you'll probably have your own ideas and opinions and ideas of what the topic is going to be about and what arguments people are going to make. You should make sure to be flexible and when you're reading, be open to new ideas and new arguments that you may not have thought of before, and think about how you can include those and write arguments about them. Second, think about the big picture before narrowing your research to one specific argument. Make sure that you're thinking about all the arguments that people are going to make and how you can answer as many of those arguments as possible with your research. Thank you for watching.